Now, French police are stopping less than half the migrants attempting to cross the channel in small boats. About 3,500 small boats carrying more than 100,000 people were recorded as making the journey between January 2018 until August of this year. France has spent most of the uh, £40.4 million pounds it has received from Britain to stop the boats on vehicles and equipment, including surveillance technology, but also on everyday appliances such as microwaves, coffee machines and beds. Yeah, meanwhile, the Rwanda deportation plan must go ahead. No ifs, no buts. That's according to Robert Jenrick, the immigration minister, speaking today ahead of tomorrow's judgment on the plan. Well, joining us now is Stephen Wolfe, director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. I mean, let's start off with uh, this sort of deep dive into quite how the French are spending uh, uh, notre argent over uh, in France. And on things, that, I mean, first of all, on the border with Italy, saying, well, this all interconnects. But then on all sorts of things, bits and bobs for their horse riding units, stuff to, I don't know, heat up their croque monsieur. I mean, they, they really need to be audited at the very least. Well, I, I was wondering whether they'd be putting a B&B chalet available for me just to come over for an odd weekend because they really don't seem to be spending the money on what they should be doing, which is preventing the boats from coming over. We know they haven't. You've seen from your own numbers, over 100,000 since 2018 have made the trip. Yes, Robert Jenner again, previous to that, um, Suela Braverman has said that they've managed to achieve some reductions, and true, there haven't been as many coming over at this time of year as compared to last time. But that could be down to some of the adverse weather conditions that we have. Nothing really to do with the French. Uh, Stephen, I think we were quite generous to the French there. We said that we'd given Britain had given Macron £40.4 million. Pounds. Well, I seem to remember not so long ago, uh, we gave him the best part of £600 million, pounds, half a billion, and that's uh, only the latest of our vast payments to Monsieur Macron uh, to patrol his own beaches. I've never understood why we give the French money to govern their own country. The beaches of northern France are part of France. That's their responsibility. Yet we gave them hundreds of millions of pounds to not patrol those beaches. What exactly have we got for that money? Well, you're quite right, Kevin, in the sense that the government agreed 500 million over a three-year period, but that ignores the 250 million that we've given them since 2014, nearly three quarters of a billion pounds. And what they are supposed to have done that is invested in drones, in ships, in policing, in border control to prevent the boats from coming over. And what your report is showing is that they're spending it obviously on ancillaries such as kettles and, and hoovers, but they're not really using it for what we expect. The reality is the British government is paying for our own border force to collect people coming over and the French border force to pretend they're stopping people but actually encouraging people to get on the boats while border force collect them. They're not the only country we pay for. We're paying for Albania. We're looking at deals to pay into Turkey as well. So we're now beginning the border force for many countries across the world in order to prevent people from coming over. It's back Britain. Yeah, well, I couldn't agree more. I amazing, actually, that Belgium manages to intercept the lot of them, apparently, because they confiscate the mobile phones, which enables them to then track down the people traffickers. Yet France don't do that because they're all coming across the channel making their videos for TikTok. Um, let's move on to the Rwanda plan. Uh, we're going to hear whether this is going to figuratively and literally take off tomorrow. Um, I mean, I think, despite whatever that verdict is, if the plan can go ahead, no one's going to be on the plane anyway because they all seem to have lawyers. What do you think is likely to happen? Well, I think there's going to be egg on the face on Robert Jenerick tomorrow when he thinks that they can stop the boats without the Rwanda pan. And I think James Cleverly will have a very difficult choice to be able to deal with the Home Office when somebody who, who was fundamentally strong like Priti Patel failed and Swela Braveman, who knew the law, failed. So what we're going to see tomorrow is probably a result that backs those who don't want to uh, see uh, immigration controls and looking at Rwanda as a possibility. And even if they did, I suspect there'll be many more individual cases taking them to the High Court first and then the Court of Appeal. And if not, we might even see the ECHR being used. I wouldn't be surprised on that too. Extraordinary situation, isn't it? Uh, yeah. uh, do you think we might leave the ECHR if we don't get the vote? We're going to have to ask you uh, quickly, please, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that is yeah. the answer. You've got ten <laughs> seconds. <The laugh. laughs> Stephen Wolfe, thank you yeah. ever so much. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. to have yeah. you on, Director of the yeah. Centre yeah. for Migration and Economic Prosperity.